Hello, my name is Greg, this is the excavation of Hobbs Barrow, and I was not expecting jump scares in a point-of-click adventure. Oh dear. Okay, let's get some introductions going. This is the excavation of Hobbs Barrow, a point-and-click adventure game. I wasn't expecting to play a point-and-click adventure game it's quite so soon after the last one. We've already played Lord Winklebottom Investigates, and that was the first game on this channel. The second game we played was The Wandering Village, um, and I was going to do something else, but then... A couple of days ago this game popped up in my Twitter feed and I had to get it. It looks so good. Um, and we're in October now so we need to get a little bit spooky. I'm not a fan of horror games. I don't like them. I love watching them. I like what? What? Oh, oh dear. I like watching other people play them. I'm not a fan of playing them myself but I, was, I wasn't really expecting too much from a point and click. They, they can't be that scary, right? I get scared very easily in playing games, uh, but this is kind of a horror point-and-click adventure. Um, so I was expecting kind of unsettling themes, a little bit of horror imagery, some spooky music. Um, I was uh, I was planning on saying, oh, the one's not going to be jump scares in a game like this, but um, with this menu, is anything to go by. We could be in for anything. Uh, but okay, I think I've talked long enough. Let's start a new game. Okay, no no introductions at all. We are straight into it. Okay, uh, I've no idea what the controls are. I've never played this before. So we're just moving. Maybe let's have a look. Any menus come up? Doesn't seem that. Okay, we're probably not in the game proper. Maybe. I guess we've just got to walk. Well, does I see anything to investigate? Okay, not yet. Miss Bateman, welcome back to Ticehurst House. It's been quite some time. Terrible weather this evening, is it not? Nurse Blaketon has had enough of me smoking inside. Makes her cough, you see. A bit of rain won't kill me, will it? You could do if it's cold. You, uh, you mustn't be interested in me nattering on. Give my regards to your father. Nurse Blaketon is preparing his supper. Why is she not answering him? You look pale, Miss Bateman. Do head inside. You'll catch your death out here. Mm, strange, okay. Spooky. I I know very little about this game. I just other than what I saw in the trailer, uh, but that Dearest was enough mother, to make me want it. I hope this letter will reach you. It's completely voice acted. It's gonna be great. I have spent these past years in torment trying to piece together what remains of fractured memories. What I am about to recount to you will seem beyond comprehension, but I beg for your patience. I will endeavour to explain the events that led me to Ticehurst House that night. As far as I can recall, this whole wretched story started with the receipt of a letter from a Mr. Leonard Shoulder. The letter brought me to the isolated village of Bewley, deep in the moors. So before we just continue, this this game is obviously in a, a pixel art style, so kind of reminiscent of the classic point and uh, click adventures from the 90s uh, but is obviously it made in a modern engine so we're going to have cutscenes and animations which you wouldn't have got in those type, type of games um, I'm very much looking forward to this and um, I have no idea what to expect I'm excited No station master in sight. I hope the village isn't too far away. 
I can't recall our exact meeting place. Mr. Shoulder mentioned it in his letter. Okay, so left click to walk, interact, right click to examine. Uh, to access the inventory in the menu, move your mouse cursor to the top of the screen. It's kind of like classic, um, what, what were they, the Sierra Adventure games were like that. Uh, left click on an inventory item to select it, right click to examine it. Uh, once an inventory item is selected, you can right click to deselect it. You can double click on an exit to teleport directly to it. Okay, fast travel, nice. The game will occasionally auto save. You can also save any time by the menu. Uh, escape menu M map when available. Quick save, quick load, spacebar, show interactable hotspots. Nice. That's always super useful in games like this. Understood. Game saved. So if I. Okay, so, so we're now a bit more traditional. We have. What do we have? We have letters, a handkerchief, and some money. So we've got sign, tracks, window, and door. So let's, uh, let's, examine, let's examine what we're holding at the moment. Uh, dear Mr. Bateman, I write this letter in the hope of piquing your curiosity. I read about your experience, uh, expertise in barrows, and if I understand correctly, you are writing a book on them and the treasures they contain. I live in the village of Belway, where a most special barrow can be found on the outskirts. It is a rectangular in form and is certainly tall enough to stand up in. The place is steeped in local legend, and there is rumour of secrets to be found deep within. I hope you will not misunderstand me and find this letter intrusive. If you wish to visit uh, Belby and excavate the barrow, I will be pleased to be your guide. Please send your response to the Plough and Furrow Inn. Belway, I shall await your letter. Most respectfully, Mr. Leonard Shoulder. Uh, dear Miss Bateman, marvellous news. I shall meet you at 8 o'clock in the evening of the 14th of this new month at the Plough and Furrow in Belway. The inn has fine rooms, which you will find adequate for your short stay. When we meet, I shall tell you more of the circumstances surrounding the site, which is referred to locally as Hobbs Barrow. It is not located on, on my own land, but we will have no issue getting permission to excavate. I wish you a safe journey. So someone's just I must shown make my up. Way to the Plough and Furrow Inn. Maybe it's because I've been hanging around here for a while. Let's just have a quick look at some stuff. If I take the sign, how would oh. the trains know where to stop? <laughs> okay, so I clicked the wrong one there. Beulie. I have Beulie. great expectations for this barrow. I was saying that completely wrong. So there's a woman over there. I swear she was not standing there a moment ago. She wasn't. I just saw her appear. The post looks unattended. A door of fine construction. Okay, so that is everything on the tracks. The tracks look quite untarnished. I don't think many trains come through here. Okay. So let's see if we can speak to the woman. Excuse me. Yes. Uh, we're going to the Plough and Furrow Inn. I'm looking for the Plough and Furrow Inn. Do you know where I can find it? Ah, young lady. Leave the station and follow the dry stone wall for around half a mile. You'll come to Bewley. Go straight ahead and you'll find the Market Square. The inn is to the side at Square. Thank you very much. What can you tell me about Bewley? Well, it used to be a thriving village. Not so much now. I don't spend much time there these days. Are you local? Ah, yes, a local I am. But I don't live in the village. Where are you travelling to today? That would be none of your business, young lady. Quite. Apologies. I wish you a pleasant journey. Is there anything else? Sure, there's another option we might There's nothing to. else I wish to discuss at the moment. Fair enough. Okay, so I don't think we're going to want to go through the door here, are we? Or maybe we can. Just... Hello. Hello there. Yeah, so there's no one there. My mother always told me not to walk on railway tracks. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, let's go. Maybe not that way, this way. Oh, there's the exit up this way. Uh, what brings you to Bewley? Oh. I beg your pardon? What brings you to Bewley, miss? Uh, yeah, tell the truth, we've got nothing to hide at the moment. I'm here to visit a local landmark, Hobbs Barrow. Hobbs Barrow? Well, I can't say I've heard of it. For what reason? I wish to excavate it. Grave robber, are you? Not at all. I merely have an interest in antiquities. 
Not much to be found in Bewley, if you ask me. You're better off waiting for the next train back to the city. I'll take my chances. Hmm. Can't say I didn't warn you. And she's gone. That was odd. Yep, certainly it was. Uh, so we have... Yeah, it's just the one exit. Let's go then. So it's always good just to check. Yep, so there's nothing to interact with. We're just walking uh, through here. So I'm, I am wondering what kind of eerie things we're going to see. This is definitely like a horror themed, I think. Oh, flew away. So I have to say, I have no idea what to expect. Whether there could be like timed elements, you don't normally get that sort of thing in this kind of game, um, but you will sometimes. Um, where you have to do things at certain times. So I don't know, do I just explore everywhere or do I just... I think we're going to roleplay this and we're going to... Path leads further into the village. Oh, maybe we don't... Oh, hang on, yeah. So we'll go this way, further into the village. Oh, I haven't... I wasn't really paying attention to what she was telling me. <laughs> where to go. Horseshoe, door, broom, and there's so many things to look at, but I don't know... Should we... Do we need to just yet? The bucket has seen better days. The anvil looks... heavy. Just a good idea. So a just finely made horseshoe. Check out what's here. Must also be a farrier. That's nice that they made the distinction between the two professions. This appears to be the forge of a local blacksmith. Okay, now we'll just kind of file these Perhaps things this away. Perhaps to a merchant. In our memory, which I don't really have much of one. Um, just for the future, where have we got? So we'll exit over there. Back where we came. Okay, let's go. It looks like I'm in the market square. I should find the inn. A fine example of a church. It looks like it was built in the Norman style. Okay, so she doesn't want to go down that exit. It looks like oh. I'm in. Can we not go to the exit? The path leads back towards the railway station. The inn. Maybe, maybe this is the the inn. The blacksmith looks closed. Okay, it's just a blacksmith. Okay. It looks like I'm in the. Uh. Wondering why she's not actually wanting. Oh, okay. So the screen moves. <laughs> that must be the inn. I was wondering why she didn't want to take the exits, but it's because we hadn't got in far enough. So there's two doors there. There's a sign. There's a cross. There's something like a cross. Quite an ornate here. construction. This was created with pride and care. The sign is in a shabby state. But the shop appears to be a cobbler's. Okay, so let's carry on then. There's more to this town. Uh, oh, here we go. Plow and furrow. Let's, let's go straight there. The plow and furrow. I have a bit of time before Mr. Shoulder arrives. I should inquire about a room. The man looks thoroughly inebriated. Yeah, he's blocking the doorway as well. Is there anything else? Window box. Plaques and things. We'll explore a bit later, I think. I'd rather just get out of this rain, to be honest with you. Hello there. What's the young lady doing out alone in this sodden weather? Uh, well, we don't need to be rude just yet. I'm heading to the plough and furrow. Bloody good pub, that's. It has the finest ales in the whole county. Oh, I'll take you there if you like. Uh, I believe we are standing directly in front of it. Oh, so we are. Please. Yes. Give us a kiss <laughs> now, won't you? Oh, God. No, thanks. <laughs> Uh, humor him? I don't think so. He usually works with men. Direct question, perhaps he's married. Or oh, deflect question. Or just slap him. I have no time for this. Oh, what do we do? Do we just uh, stamp our authority on this place? Like we're coming in, taking over. And just go straight for the slap. I'm not definitely not going to humor him. Deflect the question. Let's try being tactful. Deflect the question. Wouldn't your wife disapprove? My wife? Bloody hell, my wife! <laughs> my tea will be on the table at this hour, and if I don't get back, she'll be roaring. Until we meet again. Well, that works anyway. Without the need what for violence. Buffoon. I 
I should speak to the innkeeper about a room. Okay. So, I mean, I, I doubt many people did see it because I know that I'm, a, I'm kind of a brand new channel, so I know I don't get hardly any views. <laughs> That's one or two a video. But if anybody watching this did watch my Lord Winklebottom uh, adventure game playthrough, this is very different feel, uh, which obviously we knew coming in, but it's obviously similar types of game, both point and click adventures. Um, but despite that one being about a murder, um, it was still very lighthearted, very comical. This one is definitely a more sinister feel to it. Uh, oh god, this could be so good. I'm enjoying it already, and we haven't really done anything. Just the, the, the feel of it, just yeah, I like it. This one. Let's have a little look around. It's a crudely painted scene that appears to be of a biblical nature. Okay. A decorative plate. This one depicts a bull. Have they all got lots of plates? A decorative plate depicting a serpent. Okay. A decorative plate. This one depicts a cat. So cat, serpent, bull. A decorative plate depicting an eagle. Eagle. A decorative plate. This one depicts a dog. A decorative plate depicting a bear. Okay, wonder whether that'll be relevant. Not everything's relevant, of course, in these games, but sometimes they are. Okay, so let's let's um, let's role play this, and we uh, we'll just do what we came in here to do. The innkeeper is a serious-looking man. Uh, lots of people are being serious-looking around here, I bet. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, lass. How can I help you? I am in need of a room for the night. Aye. We aren't short of those. One night, is it? I shall need at least two nights, maybe more. Aye, it is not a problem. Three shilling per night. That includes your dinner and tea. A fair price. Yeah, sounds pretty I'll fair. I'll need that payment up front for the two nights. Well, we do have some money. How much money do we have? I have six shillings and two pence. My assistant Kenneth is bringing more funds tomorrow. I don't like travelling with too much money on me. Yeah, understandable. Well, what else we do? We never did check the rest of the inventory here. A gift from my mother. It bears my initials. T B. Okay. So, well, let's give him some money then. This is payment for the room. Thank you. Can I ask for your name, lass? Thomasina Bateman. And will Mr. Bateman be staying with us tonight? No, I am not wed. My assistant is arriving in Beaulieu tomorrow. Your assistant, you say? Will you be needing another room? Please. I'll keep a room spare. It's not quite as nice as yours, I'm afraid. Not a problem, sir. I'm sure it will be adequate. Kenneth is a man of inexpensive taste. Here's your key. Just go through the door to the right of the bar, then up the stairs. Room number two. Thank you. Can I help you with your luggage? No, thank you, sir. I can manage. I should go upstairs and freshen up before Mr. Shoulder arrives. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we just have a quick look around at some other paintings and things. I won't speak to anybody else just yet. The painting depicts a rocky edge lake. A small bronze plate states the name Lake Cubilius. A pixie-faced peasant boy painted in a naive style. A majestic animal cut down in his prime. The crackling fireplace is more welcoming than the facial expressions of the locals. Yeah, everyone's a bit dour. So there's a man, there's a woman. Oh, actually, yeah, we could walk in a little bit further and there's more to see. Oh, creaky floorboards. Lots more paintings. This painting shows a Rubenesque figure brushing her hair. Quite unusual to see such a sensual work in a room like this. Oh, yeah, positively... positively graphic. <sighs> A colourful work depicting a bashful knight. It is signed N. Hamley. A biblical scene of some kind. An angel is depicted looking longingly to the heavens. Oh, we've got an achievement for looking at this one. Uh, you have the toilet through there. Okay, so let's go. I think we need to go through this way. We'll go up to our room. I'm sure we will explore all these places more thoroughly later. This shall do nicely. Looks like a decent Time room. Time to change into something more comfortable. <gasps> Gasp, she's wearing trousers. What scandal. 
much better. Okay, well, I guess we should have a little explore of our room. An empty bowl has been provided for washing. A jug of water for drinking or washing. The wardrobe looks old, perhaps a hundred years or more in age. A sturdy looking thing, useful to many a weary traveller. No doubt the mattress is stuffed with itchy straw. A decorative plate depicting a goat. There's lots of... Oh, they've got an achievement for looking at that as well. Maybe that's all the plates. A painting of surprising quality. It portrays a rocky outcrop overlooking a vast moor. Perhaps a local landmark. So if we're getting achievements for just looking at stuff, I mean, I, mean, I will be as, th as thorough as I can be. And I will probably look at a lot of different stuff. My evening light shall be provided by this solitary candlestick. Wow. Oh, matches. Ah, complimentary matches. Useful. Uh, well, let's grab them. I bet we can pick them up. Ah, complimentary okay. matches. Useful. Grab those. Oh, I missed the thing there. Oh, was she about to say something? And I just cut her off. A mm. decrepit set of drawers. Jammed shut. The wood must have warped over the years. Okay. I've stored my case in there. A box within a box. I've hung my dress inside. Aside from that, the wardrobe is empty. Okay. So I think that is everything. Can we do anything with the bowl? I don't wish to carry the bowl around with me. Oh, we can do the jug though. This may come in handy. So we'll have a jug of water. Uh, so yeah, the room key, the matchbox, and the jug of water. Okay. And that is pretty much everything. Do you each want to go to bed? I do feel tired after the trip, but my meeting with Mr. Shoulder must take priority. Okay, so we're all ready to go. I think we need to go back down and maybe see if we can find Mr. Shoulder. We'll speak to the innkeeper. Miss Bateman, you've transformed. I feel far more comfortable in my outdoor clothing. You look like one of those explorers you see in the newspaper. I guess you could call me an explorer of sorts. I'm Stanley. Stanley Kemp. A pleasure to meet you, Stanley. And tell me, I trust your room is adequate. Most adequate. Excellent. Um. Okay, let's have a little sort of speak. Let's ask him about himself. Let's get some conversation going. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Kemp. Well, uh, I've been the proprietor of this inn for the last 16 years. I worked as a drover all over the country in my younger days. Saved up my coin and bought this place. It's a fine inn. Thank you. I often run short of ale, but my rooms are really full. We don't get many outsiders wanting to stay overnight here in Bewley. What can you tell me about Bewley? Aye, it's a quiet place. People keep to themselves, work hard. I look forward to exploring the village tomorrow. There's not a lot to see, lass. But St Edmund's Church is a fine building, worth a visit. I'm looking for a man named Leonard Shoulder. Aye, I know the man. I'm to meet him here tonight. Can I get you something to drink while you wait? Not yet, thank you. What can you tell me about Mr Shoulder? Aye, he's a quiet fellow. He only comes here to check his post. Yes, I've been corresponding with him using this address. Have you now? You found yourself an admirer. <laughs> Not quite. What business do you have with old Leonard then? Yeah, so once again, we've got nothing to hide at the moment. So so from what I understand is uh, we are uh, an author with an interest in, uh, as she said, antiquities. So uh, particularly barrows. So I think we've been writing a book about barrows and we've been invited to explore the barrow here in this village. Well, if you must know, I am what some people call a barrow digger. A what? A barrow digger. What in God's name is that? Are you familiar with tumuli? Afraid not. Barrow is another word for tumulus, or tumuli in the plural. A profoundly interesting subject. You've lost me. I excavate ancient burial sites looking for relics. A barrow is traditionally a circular mound of raised earth enclosing a burial chamber. Oh, I? You're a grave robber. I am no such thing. 
Don't worry, lass. I've met all sorts in here over the years. I won't tell anyone. I assure you, my goal is more noble than petty grave robbery. What sort of relics do you find, then? Gold? Silver? Bones? Well, rarely gold or silver, but treasures, certainly. Ancient pottery is the most common find. I've been excavating barrows all over the country. I'm documenting my findings in preparation for my book. It shall be called Vestiges of the Antiquities in Rural England. Oh, aye. Very interesting. But what does old Leonard have to do with this? He sent me a letter in which he told me about an unusual barrow in Bewley. A site called Hobbs Barrow. I'm meeting him here this evening to find out more. I've lived here nigh on me whole life, and I've heard nout about a Hobbs Barrow. Hmm. Let's find out a bit more about that. Are you sure you've never heard of Hobbs Barrow? Not in my life, lass, but I'll tell you something. The moors stretch further than the eyes can see when you leave this village. There's no doubt many a discovery to be made. Mr. Shoulder said the Barrow is well known locally, a place of legend. I'm afraid you're going to have to speak to him about it. Why are you interested in digging around in the dirt, lass? Haven't you better things to do with your time? I enjoy nothing more than the thrill of discovery, uncovering the past and piecing together our history. I inherited this passion from my father. Oh, a barrow digger too, were he? Indeed. He would take me with him on excavations as a child. Does he still come with you now, on your own adventures? I'm afraid my father's been bedbound by illness for many years. Oh, I am sorry to hear that, lass. Thank you, Mr. Kemp. He is well looked after at a private hospital. Thanks for your time. As you were. Okay. I must say, before we go on, uh, voice acting so far, uh, impeccable. <clears throat> really good. Really good quality as well. Uh, I guess we need to speak to some of the locals then. Perhaps they know a bit more about what's going on. Uh, might as well start with this guy here. Good day, sir. Yeah, as I thought, he's probably a bit too far gone. A fine exemplar of inebriation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about this guy? A rather miserable looking fellow. He's well, playing a board game by himself. I think it's Three Men's Morris. Well, if he's playing a board game, can't be all that bad. Good afternoon, sir. I love board games. <laughs> note for your ear. Oh. I beg your pardon? I said there's note for your ear, lass. Be on your way. Charming. Hmm. Okay, maybe uh, he is horrible then. Let's go over here a little bit. There's a squeaky floorboard here. Can we... We can't find it at the moment, but... Mm, could just be atmosphere, or it might be significant later on. They are engaged in an intense discussion. They are engaged okay. in an... We're leaving to it for the moment. What about this old A curmudgeonly man? looking old fellow. Curmudgeonly? Wow. I'm going to have to get my dictionary out to play this game, I think. <laughs> Hello, sir. Right. Do you know a Mr. Leonard Shoulder? You're not local. You've come on that bloody train, haven't you? Bewley's going to dogs. His voice sounds familiar, I'm sure. I've, you know, have I heard him before? Definitely seems to... Uh, I've heard him somewhere before. My name is Thomasina Bateman, and you are... None of your business, lass. Where's your husband? None of your business, sir. Ah, you're brave coming in here, all on your own. I'm a grown woman. I'm Cyril. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Cyril. Do you know Mr. Shoulder? That'd be none of your business, lass. Oh, I don't come to your city poking around asking questions, do I? Man just wants to enjoy his ale in peace. Friends, well, I'm tempted to end the conversation, but these sort of games you generally want to exhaust dialogue. I take it you are not enamoured with the railway station. Bill is going to be swarming with outsiders like you. We don't want you coming here. It's as simple as that, lads. Why not? Well, this is our town, our land. I assure you, I am not here to cause trouble. We'll see about that, won't we? Yeah, I have a feeling trouble will be caused. What can you tell me about Bewley? We're a proud community. I've lived here my whole life. Not much here to interest folks like you. Folks like me? Aye. Bye for now. Ta-da, lass.
Mr. Shoulder should really be here by now. I'll sit down and wait. Okay, so we didn't get to talk to the couple, but I have a feeling we probably, probably wouldn't have been able to say anything to them anyway. Where on earth is he? He's not showing up. What a waste of time this is turning out to be. Evening there, miss. Not you again. Oh, it's this guy shot I just his shoulder. wanted to apologise for earlier. I got home, had my tea, but it gave me an aching belly. How so? I felt bad for how I spoke to you. I'm sorry. The drink gets a hold of me sometimes. Let's start again, shall we? My name is Arthur Tillich. Okay, it's not. Thomasina Bateman. What brings you to Bewley, anyway? I'm here to meet someone, but he has not arrived. His loss, if you ask me. Perhaps you know the gentleman, Mr. Leonard Shoulder. Oh, I know Mr. Shoulder all right. If I may be so bold as to say, he's a bit long in the tooth for you. The relationship is not what you're implying. I've never met him. In fact, I know very little about him at all. Get me an ale and I'll tell you all about the old sod. Um, <laughs> do we want to? You know what? He's he's came back. He's he's owned up to his uh, uh, bad behaviour. I think we can reward him, and or well, maybe that's just maybe we're just enabling him. But sure. One ale coming right up. Thank you very much, Miss Bateman. We'll do it. Then I'll tell you all about old Leonard Shoulder. Okay, let's go and do it then. How can I help you? A tankard of your finest ale, Mr. Kemp. There we are. Two pence, please. Thank I'm you. Gonna be running out of money soon. This was the last of my money. Oh, the, Kenneth exactly. will be here tomorrow with more funds. Yeah, will he though? I have a feeling that's not gonna happen. Okay, let's Please, Miss Bateman, an ale to wet me whistle. Then I'll tell you all about old Leonard. Alright. Uh ale, there we go. Here you are, Arthur. Thanking you. Oh that hits the spot that does lass. Now then. Old Len, Leonard Shaw. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Arthur? <laughs> Mr. Tillett? Oh, for heaven's sake. The man is in a drunken stupor. That's a strong ale. After one drink too many, Arthur Tillett has passed out. I thought we were going to get a bit of exposition. Oh, jug of water. Oops. Pour it on his head. Oh, what the hell was that for? <laughs> you passed out, Mr. Tillett. Oh, sorry, lass. Where were I? Leonard Shoulder. Hold on another minute. I'm making for a piss. Oh, God. I was expecting he's going to get this murdered or something. Unbelievable. He'll never come back. He's not come back, like is he? an hour has passed. Oh god! So Perhaps I should go in there and check on oh, him. Oh, I'm not sure about that. Oh god. Um. I think, I don't know, are there multiple endings to this? No, I don't think so. I'm thinking of another game. Uh, okay. A dreadful smell oh, is emanating God. from the WC. Do I have to? Miss Bateman? That's My apologies. The ladies are closed due to faulty plumbing. You'll have to use the gents. Oh, great. Lovely. As a gent, I know that is not a pleasant experience. Mr. Tillett? Oh, God. These look modern. I'm surprised. What is that banging noise? 
Dark Washburn Dirty Towel, Mirror, okay. Is Mr. Tillett in there? It sounds like someone is in there. And there's another door there, window. Um There's no fresh water in there. Hmm. The water is brown. Oh quite ghastly. It looks like the towel has not been washed in months. Do we want it? It looks like the towel okay, has no. not been washed in months. She doesn't want to pick it up. Okay, I guess we're going to have to go for it, aren't we? So this is where the kind of spooky comes in. Because this is definitely a horror feel to it. Mr. Tillett? Mr. Tillett, are you in there? It's not in that one. There's nothing behind there to investigate. Mr. Tillett, are you in there? <laughs> I guess I sleep. Well, you're not Mr. Tillett. <laughs> or is he? The mangy thing is fast asleep. Okay, uh, so we haven't looked at the mirror yet, so let's have a quick check. The mirror is coated in a thick layer of grime. Lovely. Um, so just the window up here. I can see it's still raining out there. The door opens a crack, but appears to be blocked from the other side. Oh god, what is that? I think I can hear someone moving around. Mr. Tillett? Arthur, are you out there? Judging from the draft coming from below, this door must lead outside. I should investigate further. Okay, so I think we'll have to get around to it from the other side. Alright, okay, tell you what then, I think that's probably a good point to leave it, as we're getting to around 40 odd minutes, so... So, um, okay, I'm super excited for this. I don't know what it is, the, the feel of this game just has me wanting to play more. So I will play some more, but that's going to be in the next video. So hopefully if you've uh, followed along this far, um, please let me know what you think down in the comment section. Leave me a like if you enjoyed the video. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and I hope to see you in the next one. And we're going to find out what is going on in this place. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it, so I will see you then. Goodbye.